In this video, we're going to talk about derivatives of position. Um, remember that a derivative is an equation that lets you find the slope of a tangent line at any point on some original function. Let's start by drawing a position versus time graph. So x versus t. And we'll draw a curving line. And let's remind ourselves what just the general slope at any two points on this graph tells us. So I pick two points, and I draw a line between those two points, then I can figure out what the rise is, delta x, divided by the run, delta t, and I've got delta x over delta t as the slope is equal to what we call the average velocity. Now I have to say it's an average because um, that, that slope is only meaningful between those two points. This slope uh, here is not the same as the slope, say, between these two points. So we have to call it an average. It's not the velocity at any certain moment between the two points. To find that, um, we would call that an instantaneous velocity. To find that, we would need to do something different. We would need to draw one point, and instead of finding the slope between that point and another, we would draw a tangent line and find the slope of that tangent line. That's what the derivative is. The derivative is finding the slope of that tangent line. And conceptually, we say that the change in x is so small that it's infinitely small, and we call it an infinitesimal, so infinitely small change in x. And the change in t is so small that it's infinitely small, so an infinitely small change in t. So if we write the slope not as delta x and delta t, but as little dx and little dt, then what we have found is the instantaneous velocity. Uh, which is the velocity at that exact point. Now, that is the derivative. And what this tells me is that if I have some original function x, let's say it's 3x, I'm sorry, 3t squared plus 2t minus 4, then its derivative, dx dt, which would be 6t plus 2, this derivative is actually an equation for velocity. And I could use that equation to find the velocity at any point. So for example, if I wanted to find the velocity at, I don't know, 3 seconds, then I would say v at 3 equals 6 times 3 plus 2, or 18 plus 2, so 20 meters a second. Beginning with this original function, I took its derivative and then plugged 3 in for t to figure out the velocity at 3 seconds. So that's how you use the derivative of a position equation. For velocity, we have a similar relationship. If you have a velocity versus time graph, and you pick two points on it and draw a line between them, then the delta v and the delta t give us a slope, delta v over delta t, which tell us the average acceleration. Remember that bar means an average. But if instead I wanted to find the velocity not between two points but at a single point, so sorry, if I wanted to find the acceleration not between two points but at a single point, we would call that the instantaneous acceleration, then you would draw a tangent line at that point and find its slope. Now in this case the change in v is so small, we use a little dv because it's infinitely small. And the change in t is so small that it's infinitely small, so we use a little dt. And we would write dv over dt equals a. So the acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. So if from the last problem we took our equation of v equals 6t plus 2, its derivative dv dt, the derivative of velocity with respect to time, would just be 6. And I now know that at any moment, the acceleration is 6, because the acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. Of course, if we had a velocity function that was um, squared or something like that, like let's say this was instead 6t squared plus 2t, then its derivative would be 12t plus 2. 
and if I wanted to find the acceleration at any moment, I would need to plug in a, a time. So like if I wanted the acceleration at 2 seconds, I would do 12 times 2 plus 2 is 24 plus 2, so 26 meters per second squared. So that's how you use the derivative of a, vo of a velocity function um, with respect to time to find the acceleration. Now we should also note that since we know that the derivative of velocity with respect to time is acceleration and the derivative of position with respect to, to time is velocity, then really what we're doing is we're taking the derivative with respect to time of, sorry, of the derivative of position with respect to time. Another way of saying that is that we are taking the second derivative of position, or acceleration is the second derivative of position. This is written a little funny in uh, calculus notation. Um, what you do is you would say, okay, the dt's, they're sort of being squared, so dt squared. But here, I need to somehow remember that I'm not taking the dx and squaring it, but I'm taking the derivative of the derivative of x. So we write it like this, d squared x. So this is a really important notation um, in physics. It's how we say the second derivative of position with respect to time. Let's kind of roadmap this for ourselves. We just learned that if you have some position equation, then the velocity is equal to the derivative of that position equation with respect to time. And the acceleration is the derivative of that derivative with respect to time. Or the second derivative of position with respect to time. Okay, uh, let's just write something with numbers so this makes a little bit of sense. If your position equation is 10t cubed plus 3t plus 1, your velocity equation would be 30t squared plus 3. And your acceleration equation would be 60t. So far, so good. If I did this symbolically, like let's say I had a position equation of, uh, I don't know, how about 1 half a t squared plus v naught t plus x naught, where a, v naught, and x naught are all constants, then when I took the derivative, I would get 2 times 1 half, or just a times t plus the derivative of v naught t would just be v naught. And if I took the derivative of that equation, of the velocity, to get the acceleration, I would just get a. Funny how that works out. Let's see how this works in some practice problems. Marty McFly the physics fly's position is given by the equation x of t equals alpha t cubed plus beta t squared plus ct where alpha is 2 meters per second cubed, beta is negative 6 meters per second squared, and c is 5 meters per second. What is McFly's velocity and acceleration at 2 seconds? Graph McFly's velocity and acceleration as functions of time, and where does McFly come to a stop? Okay, so let's start by maybe writing for ourselves a more math-friendly version of this equation. So I would say x equals 2 t cubed minus 6 t squared plus 5 t. Then right away, if I want, I can just go ahead and make the velocity and acceleration equations. I know the velocity equation is going to be 6 t squared minus 12 t plus 5. And the acceleration equation is going to be 12 t minus 12. Okay, good. So now I can find the position, velocity, and acceleration at any time, because I have created three equations, or two new equations from my first, giving me three equations to learn everything about the object's motion. So for A, what is the velocity 
and acceleration at two seconds, the way that I would write this is I would say v of 2 is 6 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2 plus 5, which is 5 meters per second. The acceleration at 2 is going to be 12 times 2 minus 12, or, well, 12 meters per second squared. If I wanted to see how the units work out, I would need to um, plug them in. But for this, for this kind of work, it really gets messy if you do that. So it's nice to just sort of write things in a math-friendly notation. Let's learn a fun trick. Get your graphing calculator out. Do it. You're going to love it. Now, let's go to y equals and put in our position equation. 2, we're going to use x instead of t. Oh, squared, not squared. Carrot 3, that's cubed. Minus 6x squared uh, plus 5x. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph that. Okay, so graph. Okay, nice. So we just graphed the position of this fly flying around. Um, if you're curious about the window, because you can't get this window, here is the window. Okay, great. Now, what I can do with this position graph is I can actually find the slope at a point on this graph in my graphing calculator, meaning I can find the derivative at some value of time. The way that I do that is I go to second calc derivative, which is 6. Now, doing this will let me find the derivative at some point, which, for our position equation, the derivative is going to tell us the velocity. So if I want to find the velocity at 2 seconds, then I would press Enter, and then press 2, and Enter again. Then, boom, it tells me the velocity at 2 seconds, so the slope at this point right here is 5. Point zero 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 two. don't worry about it, 5 meters per second. If I wanted to figure out what the velocity derivative was to get the acceleration in two seconds, then what I would do is graph 12 x, oh, I'm sorry, not 12, 6 x squared minus 12 x plus 5. So that's the velocity equation. So if I wanted to check my answer for the um, acceleration at 2 seconds, then I would graph this, try and get a good window, mm, this should work, and then go to second, calc, derivative, because now I put the velocity function in, and if I find its derivative, then I'm going to get the acceleration, so I take the derivative, and I press 2, because I want to find the derivative at 2, and this tells me, boom, the derivative of the velocity function at twelve second, or 2 seconds is 12, which is exactly what I calculated before. So that's how you use your graphing calculators, um, graphing features to find the derivatives at certain points. Now let's go back to our uh, original function. Actually wait, I forgot. Before we do that, we are going to go back to the original position equation, this one. But before we do that, let's, let's do part B, graph the velocity and acceleration equations. So if I wanted to graph the velocity equation. Uh, I know that it starts at 5, because that's the c term. It has a negative 12 b term, which means it starts with a slope of negative 12, um, and it will have a positive smiley face curve to it. So the function would look something like this. And I know it crosses the x-axis because we just graphed it in our calculator. The acceleration versus time graph would uh, just be a straight line starting at negative 12. And I know, I should probably mark that 5, I know that it would cross 0 at whatever time this minimum on my velocity uh, graph occurs because the slope of velocity versus time is acceleration and here at this minimum the slope is zero so I now have an acceleration of zero and the line generally slopes with positive 12 so it makes sense that that would occur okay so that's what the graphs would look like
for uh, C. Where does McFly come to a stop? Well, <laughs> I guess we just kind of showed that by graphing the velocity and the acceleration versus time. Um, but basically, this minimum right here. Anytime there is a minimum or a maximum on a vol sorry. We need to go back to our original position function, not the velocity. So let's do that. Whenever there is a minimum on our position equation. So 2x cubed uh, minus 6x squared plus 5x. Okay, so we graph that. And anywhere there is a minimum or a maximum, there is going to be a velocity of 0 because that's where the slope is zero. So here, at this maximum, there's a slope of zero, uh, and the slope of position versus time is velocity, so a velocity of zero. And then here at this minimum, there's going to be a velocity uh, of zero. Now, you could, you could solve this algebraically for part C. You could solve this algebraically by saying when the velocity is zero, so when zero is 6t squared minus 12t plus 5, uh, and then you could use uh, the quadratic formula to get your answers for t. There would be two answers for t. But of course, if we just have this position function in front of us, we can use the minimum and maximum feature to get those times. So to do that, we go to second calc. Oh, sorry. Uh, and then we go to minimum or maximum. Let's start with the maximum. So the maximum is going to be here. Go to the left of it. And to the right of it, click enter, and boom. I know that at a x, which for us is our time, because that's the x variable in our position equation, so at 0 0.59, 0 0.6, let's say, uh, you would reach a maximum where there is a slope of 0 and therefore a velocity of 0. So I already know a solution to this equation here is going to be 0 0.6. So 0 0.6 seconds. The minimum is to the right of it. And to find the minimum, we go to second to calc minimum. And then we go over to the left, to the right. Take it back now, you know. And now I found another minimum, so the slope is zero. Therefore, it stopped because the velocity is zero when the slope is zero. Uh, and that's at 1.4x, uh, which for us is our time values, because again, this is a graph of the position versus time. Uh, so our x values are actually our time values. And 1.4 seconds is where we're going to have that slope. So 1.4. OK, so that's where it comes to a stop. Now, of course, you could find the positions of these stops by plugging those times back into your position equation. Or you could take a look at the position on the graphing calculator. You can answer all kinds of stuff with this new information. But what's key is for us to remember this really new important idea that if I know some position equation, I know that its derivative is velocity. And its second derivative is acceleration. Another way of saying that uh, is that the derivative of velocity with respect to time is the acceleration. It always helps to see an example, so let's just do one last one to close. Let's say your position function is 10 t to the fourth minus 3 t cubed plus 4. Then your velocity function would be 40 t cubed minus 9 t squared. And your acceleration would be 120 t squared minus 18 t. Because again, we took the derivative once to get the velocity, and then the derivative twice, which we write very goofy, to get the acceleration. Congratulations. You're so good at physics and calculus. You're the smartest person in the world. You're going to unlock all of the secrets of the universe and make millions of dollars. And then one day, you're going to send me a check for a million dollars because you think it's going to be hilarious. And I'm going to be like, oh my god, that's so funny. Remember when I said you were going to give me a million dollars? And then later, you gave me a million dollars. That's hilarious. Well, have a good, luck, a good laugh, and I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Thank you, and goodbye.